I thought it would be a fun idea to start a new series where your favourite Platinum YouTubers choose which game I Platinum next. Now, you may be thinking, how do I decide which YouTuber I start with? Let's find out. As you can see, I have made a wheel with all of your favourite Platinum YouTubers. Now, if you think I missed anyone out, let me know in the comments. I'll make sure to add them because I want this series to last as long as possible. So, let's stop wasting time and find out who is going to choose my first Platinum. Please be someone nice, you know. Is that going to be Adam? No way it landed on Adam first spin. Okay, now Adam is really nice. I know for a fact Adam is not going to give me something hard. Let's see what he's give us. Right, okay, here we are. We have the video from Adam McDermott himself. Now, I gave all of these YouTubers one requirement only, and that was that the game cannot be longer than 150 hours. So I gave everyone free will pretty much. They can do any difficulty, anything they wanted. So I'm glad it landed on Adam first because I've got a feeling... He's not going to try and kill me, but let's just see what he has to say and what game we'll be starting with. Hey, Seg. Hello. I'm sending you to an iconic location, a place. Right, just pausing it here. When you hit, hear iconic and you think of Adam, you think of the, the Story World games, you know, like your Uncharted's, your Bioshock's, what else is there? Maybe even Alien Isolation. That could be a thing, but let, let, let's see. I'm, I've got a feeling it's on that path. You know, it is Adam after all. Where a man is entitled to the sweat of his brow. I'm sending you to Rapture. Yeah, um, we're heading to Bioshock now. Um, I have never actually played Bioshock. I'll put my hand up. Uh, back in the day, fun fact for you, I, I bought Bioshock on the PS3. And they gave me Bioshock 2 in the case. So I just never played it. Let's see what else he has to say about this game. Enjoy it. I told you you've played Bioshock before. Nope. Enjoy it. Report back. Watch out for there's a glitch about the difficulty trophy. There's also a glitch to get around that where you can play up to the very last boss on easy or something. You right, I do just want to say another thing about this series. If there's a glitch like this, as long as they tell me I strictly cannot do it, I'm going to do it. I don't care. Look, I'm a trophy on the end of the day. I'm not going to make it more difficult for no reason. All right, if there is a glitch, I'm doing the glitch. You can, make it that. You can save scum for the no violet chamber run. And as for the collectibles, the audio logs are actually good. They help flesh out the world and its characters. Get lost in Rapture, Seg. Uh, I've got a feeling I'll get lost. Not in the way he means. I'll probably just get lost on the story path, to be honest. Hope you enjoy it. I will. I will try and enjoy it. But Adam did not say that I can't use any glitches. So I'll have to look into those as I get going. But let's just jump straight into Bioshock. Right, look. Okay, I've had some thinking. I am going to play on easy because we're talking about Adam McDermott here. He wants me to enjoy this game. I've never played it before. And look, I don't want to be screaming over survivor difficulty. I'll just play on easy. I'm a trophy on it. I'm here for the trophies. Before anyone complains about me glitching the difficulty, just let me off. There is some pretty big names on the wheel, such as Nick, which will give me crazy difficult games. So let me enjoy an easier one whilst I still can. Also, just a quick mention, this idiot has been making trophy hunting content for almost a year now and still finds a way to put his webcam over the trophies. Apologies, but don't worry, I do fix it soon. So, after finding my way into Rapture, I get my first taste of what the combat and difficulty was like. Maybe you can see why I flew through this game. Oh, she got a baby! That's not a baby! Again, apologies for blocking the trophies, but at this time I wanted to do everything in one run. So I was following a collectible guide on the side, but it didn't take long before I got my first trophy of the video. Wait, have that. Yes! Toaster in the tub. The place shot to the enemy in the water. Sorry, lads. And after fighting my way through the first area of the game, I got my first story trophy. Oh, completed welcome. Is this the first story trophy? Welcome to Rapture. So if you were like me and never played Bioshock before, there are things all over the map such as vending machines, security bots, and even turrets all over which you can hack. And after coming across a security bot on the story path, I got my first Hackerman experience. This will become quite a pain later on. Finish, yeah. Hack to security bot. Oh, another one, one successful hack. Back-to-back -back trophies, baby. And as I mentioned earlier, along my merry way, I found a vending machine, so I decided to become Hackerman once again. Bang, finish. Oh, hacked a vending machine. I did also happen to find out that Rapture can be one scary place at times, even when you're playing on the easiest difficulty. Oh, you prick. Oh, where are you all coming from? 
Oh, and I also think I need to work on my awareness to prevent things like this happening again. Speedy hacker. Thank you. Oh my god! What were you doing? As I progressed further into the game, the hacking got harder and harder, so whilst failing to open up this safe, I found out the beauty of auto-hack. Right, I'm auto-hacking, mate. <laughs> Hack to safe, yep. And before I knew it, I used the easy mode wrench to get my next story trophy. Whoa, defeated Dr. Steinman. Carrying on with the story path, I got introduced to the little sister for the first time. There's multiple of these in each area of the game, and to get all of the trophies in one run, it meant I had to rescue them all and not harvest a single one. I did quickly find out though, they do not like to hang around. Of course I saved you, mate. Bloody... She's off! Alright, is that the thanks I get? Bloody hell. At this point in the game, I finally unlocked the camera. There are many trophies tied to completing research, which pretty much means just taking a picture of an enemy an awful lot. These are easily the worst trophies in the game, as mid-fight you have to casually pull out a camera and take pictures like your B-Real just went off for the day. But I got a trophy for taking a picture of the first enemy type. Oh, Researcher Splicer, okay. And apparently if you pull out your camera and take a cheeky shot whilst getting bullets sprayed at you, that's enough to consist of an A rating picture. I wouldn't recommend trying this at home though. Don't mind me, just taking a picture, quality research po uh, a photo. Oh. We got an A! I also managed to get my next story trophy, and to this day, it still looks like a normal enemy I killed to get it, but I won't complain. Ooh! Defeated Peach Wilkins! Um, Did I? Was that him? Wait, what? And whilst following the lovely one hour long collectible guide, it meant I found my first upgrade station. There's quite a few of these around the map, but of course I decided to upgrade the minigun first, as it is my favourite weapon in the game. Oh, we upgraded a weapon! Yo, look at this, this looks sick now, what? Around the map of Bioshock, like quite a lot of games today, you can loot and get items which allow you to go to these invent machines. So I decided to go and use them for the first time, and turns out this machine would actually become quite annoying later on. Oh, basic inventor! Invented at least one item. And before I knew it, I was back at my next upgrade station, juicing out my machine gun once again. Do that. Oh, one fully upgraded weapon. And not long after that, I finally had the opportunity to stealth by a security bot and bring out my inner hacker man yet again. Boom. Is that the first one? It is, hacker security camera. So I spoke about the research trophies and the camera earlier. Not only do you have to take a picture once, but you have to take many, many pictures to upgrade your research level for each individual enemy type. This means any new enemy you come across, instead of fighting them, you wanna shout cheese in their face and spam camera shots in the hopes that it increases your level. After some time, I finally snapped enough pictures of the first enemy type. Yeah, finally. Fully researched thuggish splices. Oh, there's so many pictures to be taken. And not long after that was the next most common enemy in the game. Oh, okay, there's the gun splicer as well, lovely. As I proceeded on with the story path, would you be surprised if I told you I got a story related trophy? Oh, restored the forest story trophy. And to my surprise, right in the middle of Rapture, there is some lovely, lovely slot machines. To be safe, I made a save before I started spinning so I didn't run out of money, but it didn't take long before I hit the jackpot I was looking for. Oh, oh, yes! We did it! Max win! Oh, lucky winner hit the jackpot! I did just hit the jackpot, but I did also realise me being an idiot. My webcam was all the way over there, blocking the trophies. We're good now. <clears throat> Finally! And of course, yet again, channeling my inner photographer, I got another research trophy, and you can actually see it now. Yes! Fully researched the spider splicers! And yet again, another set of research. God damn, it feels like collectible hell out here because my next trophy was for fully upgrading a second weapon. Bam. So I mentioned the invent machines earlier. I did notice that this time there was a trophy for inventing a hundred items. So whenever I could or came across one, I'd just go in and invent a couple things. Doing so got me a trophy I didn't expect. Whoa, ammo inventor. Successfully invented all possible ammo types. Oh, that was an accident. And what a shock, we have another research trophy coming up. Although this time it wasn't for completing research, to my surprise. 
I do. Prophilic photographer. Take at least one photo in every research group. Continuing along the story path, it got me my next and quite an artistic story trophy. And before I knew it, I was at my next, you guessed it, upgrade station. At this point, you guys have seen me research quite a bit already. Just know there was quite a few trophies tied to this, so I'm not going to go over each one. So if there's any skip trophies, those are what they're for. Moving on, I got the next story trophy, though it's safe to say I've never heard of anyone have a golf club stuck in their head before. Oh, we defeated Andrew Ryan. Oh dear, he's got a bit of a problem there. Okay, a few research trophies later, I found myself in a little bit of a scrap, but I also remembered to pick up the missable trophy after. Take your loot and also get the quick trophy for taking a picture of your buddy. Oh, no, whoops. Take a picture of your buddy. Boom. Irony. The player is taking a picture of Sander Cohen's corpse. I like it. Don't worry. I kept following my collectible guide and upgraded another weapon. A fourth gun. Thank you very much. Four fully upgraded weapons. And before I knew it, I was coming closer to the end of the game and I had finally researched everything and got the last research trophy. Please, give it to me. Fully researched, Rosie. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Research PhD. Oh, I don't need to research anything anymore. Come on. So in Bioshock, you have these things called tonics. They're basically upgrades, but I was collecting them along the way using the collectible guide, but I also bought a few, which led to my next trophy. Whoa. Tonic collector, collect or invent 58 tonics. Okay. I also took a second to look through the trophy list again and noticed there was one for buying a plasmid slot. These allow you to hold more upgrades, which I showed earlier, but conveniently, I was able to buy them at this garden vending machine. Right, there you go, bought one slot. And before I knew it, I could finally say goodbye to the upgrade stations as I fully upgraded my last weapon. Oh, lovely. A weapon upgrade station. Trophy! Woo! Five fully upgraded weapons. Okay, so I mentioned earlier about needing to hack a lot. This was one of the more annoying trophies, and at this point I was basically done with the game, story-wise. I had one auto-hack left, so the best way for me to do this was instead of running round everywhere looking for everything to hack, I just made a save, auto-hacked this invent machine in front of me, reloaded my save over and over. This took a while, but it was easily the best method. Oh, we got it! Skilled hacker! Complete 50 hacks! And the whole reason I did it in front of the invent machine was because I had enough items to craft one thing inside of it. And guess what? I needed to craft a hell of a lot more. So after a dozen save reloads later, I finally got that trophy too. Oh, finally! I have an inventor! Invent 100 items! No more save reloading! As I was getting closer and closer to the end of the game, no little sisters must be left behind. I checked every area and made sure I saved all of the little sisters, so I was hoping this was the last one I needed to rescue. It's not! Dealt with every little sister! The players either harvested or rescued- I rescued them all! A good guy. You can tell I'm getting closer and closer to the end of the game because after following an hour-long collectible guide, we finally got the last audio diary. Oh, historian, every audio diary. There is so many, so many in this game. Oh my god. Slight spoiler, but if you're wondering why my vision is all fish-eyed, it's because I became the true big daddy like I am. Oh, we became a big daddy. Oh, we're taking over now. As you saw me speak about upgrading the plasma tonic slot earlier, I was around the corner from the end of the game, so I was getting slightly worried I was going to miss this trophy. However, thankfully, right near the end, there was another garden vending machine, which just let me buy all the upgrades to get the trophy. Yes, oh, max doll tracks. Okay, that was the one I was worried about. Thank God for that. All right, here we are in the final boss fight. Now, I said I was going to glitch the difficulty, and that is what I was doing here. Apparently, once you beat the boss and the screen goes white, that is when the game determines what difficulty you played the game on. So, if you very quickly change it to Survivor during that screen, the trophies will pop. Don't worry, I know there are some YouTubers on the wheel that will give me a hard time with games, and Adam just wanted me to enjoy Bioshock to the full, and I recommend anyone else does the same. Not everything has to be a painful challenge. Right, if I've done this right, we should get a bunch of trophies. Okay, so in true PS5 fashion, not all the trophies popped at once. Sony really need to fix this glitch as I thought I did it wrong. However, there was one trophy that did pop up. Right, 
Little Sister Saviour. Okay, we completed the game without harvesting any. Now, oh wait, hang on. Did they all pop without me realising is the question. Oh, they did. Yeah, okay. I hate when PlayStation does this. But look, okay, because we did that glitch, we did get the complete the game on hard and Survivor without the Vita Chambers. Okay, there was one trophy I missed. I'll get that now. And we've got the Platinum. Okay. And this one trophy I missed was actually a really simple one for hacking a turret. Whenever I saw them in-game, I just shot the hell out of them. So I'm not surprised I missed this one. It is. Right, we hacked a turret. Okay, I missed that because for some reason it just didn't pop before, but it did now. And... Platinum Trophy, we unlocked all the trophies for Bioshock, but as you can tell by the trophy count, it is not over yet, we still have the challenge rooms to do, you know I can't leave a game unfinished. Moving on to the DLC, there actually isn't a lot to cover here, there is just three different maps with challenges inside, these all consist of rescuing the little sister, rescuing the little sister in under a certain time frame, and collecting all the roses in the level, which some have some interesting ways to reach them as you're about to see. But following a really simple guide, this really only takes like an hour to finish. Bruh, why have they got me doing Big Daddy Parkour? Ah, I got it! And after completing the first challenge room for the first time, I got two trophies. Bosh. Right, the Iron Team Rescuer rescued the little sister. Oh! We also got the collector find all the collectible roses. Alright, there's two already. So I decided to go through the first challenge room again to get the speedrun trophy. This was easily the quickest and easiest room of the three. Woo! The IED expert rescued it under three minutes. Now I did somehow miss a trophy, which I'm gonna have to get again. And that trophy was quite a simple one. The first challenge room is all about using your turrets to your advantage to kill the big daddies. Now, the way I was trying to use them before ended up blowing up some of the machine gun turrets, which voided the trophy. After watching a quick video on the best way to go about this, I quite simply copied it, and the trophy popped. Thanks, Mr. Thank you, the Iron Team Pacifist. I was supposed to get that first time, but I don't know how I didn't. Alright, first challenge room done. Again, there isn't really a whole lot to go over in the second challenge room. The trophies were pretty similar. In the first run though, I managed to rescue the little sister and also get all the roses again. Thanks, I've cocked it up. Right, I got the one for rescuing the little sister and I got all the roses, but I bloody messed up on the Ferris wheel. Oh. So I said the first challenge room was all about turrets. This one was all about electricity. You have to go around the room looking for different ways to electrocute the water to activate the Ferris wheel where the little sister was stuck. The trophy I messed up before was finding enough parts to electrocute the switch enough to get the ferris wheel to do a full cycle. Thankfully, I managed to get it the second time round. Oh, thank you, yes! Charged up the ferris wheel nine times. Alright, speedrun now. And the speedrun is what I did. For this one, you only needed to find enough electricity to turn the ferris wheel enough for the little sister to come down safely, which was fairly simple in the end. As I said, following a guide made these rooms a breeze. First for that, boom! Turn of Events Expert beat the challenge room two in four minutes. One challenge room left, baby. And just like that, I was onto the final challenge room. Even following a guide, this one was a little crazy as it was a 15 minute speed run this time. One trophy forced you to play on medium difficulty, but obviously there was a glitch to play on easy like the main game. But basically it was constant rooms of different enemies to fight whilst collecting roses, Luckily, I managed to do it all in one run, so it took 15 total minutes. And also, on top of that, I was forced to only use a wrench and plasmids. I don't have any sort of footage for this as it was so intense I couldn't clip, but thankfully, I did everything in one go and 100 percented Bioshock. Oh my god. Thank you, Mr. Oh, right, we sh we are we done? Right, we rescued the little sister using only plasmid tonics and the wrench. We got the expert, we did it in 15 minutes. Rescuer, we rescued the little sister. Yes, collect, collect all the roses. That is it. That is Bioshock 100%ed. Adam, as always, thank you so much for the suggestion. What a game this was. Just like that is the Bioshock 100%. Again, shout out to Adam. If you haven't already subscribed to his channel, what are you doing? I'll leave it in the description. Thank you for being a part and giving me such a great first game. Nice and easy, only about 10 hours, I want to say. It was a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.